What's going on guys? It's OmniArch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be playing some Clash Royale. Now, this is a video that I've wanted to make for a very long time because I've been playing Clash Royale since it was first officially launched in the United States. Um, I played for a few months, I was addicted, and then I got bored of it because Hog Freeze was broken. Um, so I quit for a few months and then I came back. I was passively playing it for probably about a year now or more. Um, and then lately I've been really, really into the game and I decided, you know what? I'm going to make a walkthrough let's play type of series. Maybe this will be the only video. I don't know. It depends on how you guys react to it. But um, I just really, really love this game, and I wanted to do kind of a walkthrough Let's Play for it on YouTube here, um, and try and spread that love to you guys. Obviously, like I said, this is this is primarily a first-person shooter channel, but I figured maybe I could be the catalyst to get you guys to enjoy a game like this um, as much as I do, because I really, really like it. Um, <clears throat> so here we are. This is a fresh new account, um, and we are going to start from scratch and uh, go through the tutorial, and I'm going to explain the game, how the game works, the different troops, basically pretty much everything you'll need to know to get started. Now, um, what you'll notice first is uh, the game board, and you will see that there are three enemy towers in red, and we have the three blue towers here um, on the bottom. The map is, uh, or the board, is split up in two sections um, by the river, and there are the two bridges on both sides. Now, you can only deploy troops or buildings or anything on your side of the river unless you destroy one of the enemy's towers. Some of the troops can actually go over the river um, if they either are flying or they can jump, such as the Hog Rider, I believe. Um, and uh, the whole point of the game is to destroy the enemy towers before they destroy yours. So it's kind of like a multiplayer tower defense game, but it takes laning kind of from MOBAs, but it's a card game because you have eight cards per deck. You cycle through those cards throughout the match um, against your opponent. Now, you can see um, the left and the right towers both have a princess on top of them. Those are the crown towers, and the princess will attack your troops, or, um, or your princess will attack their troops, um, if they come within range of that tower um, and the king tower actually has a hidden cannon under the floor that only comes out if one of your crown towers is destroyed or if you attack the king before he attacks you um, so it's definitely not something you want to do if you haven't destroyed a crown tower then you don't want to attack the king um, if you destroy the enemy king tower before they destroy yours, you win automatically in a three crown victory. Um, however, if neither king tower gets destroyed throughout a battle, whoever destroys the most towers wins. So if I destroy two of their towers and they destroy one of mine, I win. Um, of course, you can end in a draw, which does happen semi-frequently in standard ladder, but much less frequently in actual tournaments or challenges. Uh, and I'm actually going to make this video kind of like a live stream where... I'm not going to edit anything, um, you're just going to see it all as it's happening, and I really need some water because this is the second take of the video, and um, the first take was 36 minutes. Anyway, so let's just jump right into it. <clears throat> the tutorial really wants us to drop the knights over here by the bridge, so we're going to do that. Um, and it's going to have us place the archers behind him, and this is what's known as a push. <clears throat> um, I'm pushing the left lane, and as you can see, the knight is actually uh, taking the damage while the archers are attacking the tower. Now, knights are kind of a tank unit, which means they have a lot of HP, and uh, they don't do too much damage. Um, and the archers are the opposite, where they deal a pretty decent amount of damage, but they don't have a lot of HP. Um, so as you can see here, the giant has even more HP than the knight, and he's going to be able to take out that king tower no problem, um, because he's just, that's what he does. So we win! We won our first three crown victory, super, super easy, there's absolutely no opposition, they didn't deploy any troops. Uh, nothing was stopping us from winning, so there was no way we could lose. So, five seconds to unlock our first chest. Now, of course, you could use a gem to speed this up, but gems are the premium currency of the game. They cost real money. Um, you can earn some in chests, but for the most part, you'll be paying for them. Um, so, we get 18 gold. We get one knight and two arrows, which is cool. So, let's go in here, and these are all the cards that you can unlock versus the ones that you do have. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade the knight for 5 gold, it only costs 5 gold, and you're going to see his damage, damage per second, and hit points go up when he goes to level 2. Uh, and it costed 2 cards to get him there too, so now you can see 
uh, we have zero out of four knight cards and if we want him to be level three we'll need four knight cards in order to get him there um, and if you look at the arrows we also have three arrow cards which means we can upgrade arrows as well uh, which is what we're gonna do because why not even though the tutorial is not telling us to I feel like we're gonna use arrows for a while so we're gonna just use that and upgrade them as soon as possible um, as you can see it's only a six card deck for the tutorial but we'll be earning the other cards uh, so let's hit battle and um, we're going to learn about some defense here. And I'm going to take this time to also talk about some of the different types of um, cards in the game. There's three different types. There are troops, buildings, and spells. Now, as you can see on the left lane, the enemy has deployed some skeletons and some goblins. Nothing too crazy. Those are all pretty easy to destroy. But uh, we're going to place the knight down again because he's a very universal, well-rounded unit. Um, so we're going to place the knight down here. And we're also going to place the archers right behind him, just like we did before. So that way he takes the blunt force of the damage from all these guys. And the archers do all the dirty work of destroying them. Uh, but we also obviously saw the knight do some work there as well. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, the um, the three different types of cards are troops, um, buildings, and spells. And you can see the arrows and the fireball are actually spell cards, whereas the knight, uh, the bomber over here, um, the skeletons, the, the archers, those are all troop cards. Uh, so we're going to launch our first spell card, actually, right at this king tower, because why not? And we'll drop the arrows on it as well. Normally that's not something you would do this early in the game, but it's a tutorial and there's no way we can lose. Um, so there we go. We got the three crown victory there again. Um, so there we go. Easy. Now buildings are something that you would place on generally your side of the field as a defensive maneuver. Um, there are a couple buildings like the Expo and the Mortar that are a little bit more offensive. Um, of course, they can be used defensively as well, but for the most part, buildings are defensive. Um, troops you can use to defend and attack, and spells are... Um, usually used to support your troops or in a, you know, quote unquote, um, oh crap moment, you can use them on defense as well. Um, and of course, those are just very loose definitions. You can use any card for however you want it to be used, uh, and depending on the situation. So here we got some archers, we got another knights, <clears throat> and we unlocked the musketeer, which is cool. So, um, as you can see, this is actually a rare card. Uh, musketeers are a rare card, and this is a good time to talk about the rarity of the different cards that we can go through. So if we look here, uh, the top four cards here, starting with the knights, these four are all common cards because they are gray. Um, the orange cards here, the fireball, the giant, and the musketeer are rare cards. Um, and then you also have epic cards, which are purple, and legendary cards, which are like color changing rainbow type of color, which is cool. Um, while we're here, let's upgrade the archers because why not? They're a really good card. Um, and we're going to hit battle, and we're going to continue through the uh, tutorial. Now, of course, this game is also made by Supercell, which is the maker of Clash of Clans, so the same lore and characters and cards kind of return from that game, so if you've played that, then you should, a lot of this stuff should actually be uh, familiar um, to you. So he said, let's combine our cards for a stronger attack, so let's do that. Um, what he's going to do now is have us actually deploy the giants, and we'll do that right at the bridge, or I guess they want us to deploy it there. Um, and now we're going to deploy the archers right behind the giant. Um, and what this is going to do is the same thing as the knight, except the giant has even more health. Um, and the, the difference here between the giant and the knight is that the giant only attacks buildings. Um, so, you know, where... I'm not even going to use that fireball, there's no point. Um, so where the knight is um, able to attack these units, the giant can only... Um, attack buildings so he you know if you drop him and they deploy skeletons he actually can't do anything about that there's nothing he can do about skeletons even though they're a really weak unit um, they just he can't attack them he only attacks buildings um, wow if that fireball was one second later um, <clears throat> so that's that so some troops only attack buildings you know hog riders another one only attacks buildings um, other troops just attack anything um, some troops can only attack ground units whereas other troops um, attack flying units as well um, so there's a little bit more depth there. Now you see here, this is going to get an epic card, which is cool. You don't always get an epic from free stuff. So epics are a little bit more harder to come by, uh, than some of the other cards in the game. So let's open that up and we'll see if we get 18 golds and one knight and one archer. And I'm hoping it's a witch. It is. Okay. Um, so we get the witch. 
Now, actually, that might be programmed to give you a witch every time. I'm actually not sure. But you might have actually gotten either the skeleton army, baby dragon, or the prince, as you can see here. Um, the prince, uh, baby dragon, you know, you could have gotten any of these four cards. I think it might give you a witch every time, but if not, you probably got one of those cards. Um, so a witch, again, is epic. She's in purple. And the witch is actually one of my favorite cards in the game because she's very, very good at um, counter pushing. She actually spawns skeletons, and that's it, that's for a different time. We'll, we'll talk about that later. So let's jump into this next part of the tutorial where it says lets you even learn against a tougher opponent. And one thing that I'll note here is actually the uh, elixir on the bottom. You can see it's max 10 and it's it's rising as time passes. Um, and you'll see the little elixir droplet beneath each card picture here. So the witch you can see costs five. The um, archers you can see cost three. Um, and here I'm just making sure I'm recording. Now I'm actually going to drop my knight here. Uh, and then I'm going to drop the bomber to kind of destroy these uh, these other troops. Now bombers are AOE targeting, so they actually they they their damage is dealt in a radius, so it can deal damage to a bunch of troops all at the same time. I'm going to drop my musketeer over here to counter these goblins, and it's going to be more than enough to counter. So she's actually going to survive to not only kill the goblins but kill the skeletons. And I'd be willing to bet she makes it all the way to the tower because I'm going to drop a giant right here. Now, of course, I could have pushed the left side, right? Um, and we could have continued to deal damage to the tower that we've already dealt damage to, but there's no point because we've made it all the way to this tower as well. <clears throat> and you can see we quickly have dealt even more. So <clears throat> I'm not even going to address those skeletons on the left hand side because there's no point. Um, and I'm actually going to drop my fireball right here in case he decides to do anything about it. Um, but anyway, like I was saying before, the elixir is, is your um, currency throughout the match. And every card, spell, building, everything costs Elixir to use. And um, you basically want to use your Elixir as efficiently as possible to counter your uh, opponent's troops and Elixir. So that way, you know, you have the most value. And the more cards that you get to keep uh, in rotation and the more Elixir you have, the better you can counter your opponent and uh, deal some damage. So let me take some water here. <coughs> <clears throat> now, I think Exxon York is probably taken. No? Okay. So, Exxon York is not taken, apparently. <clears throat> so, let's do five seconds here to open the chest. And um, that's easy. Easy money, right? So, we get the 18 gold, one bomber, which is cool. Uh, two arrows. Didn't really need those. Um, but we can upgrade the bomber, which is nice. So, let's do that. So now all of our common cards are level 2, and we have all level 1 of the other rarity. So we have one more um, match for training, which is going to be pretty easy. Um, so now for the final challenge. Now I'm assuming he's going to use stuff beyond just goblins and the knights and the skeletons. Um, so usually, typically, a match starts by players waiting until their elixir is full. And the reason that people do that is because if you deploy something first, then your opponent has the advantage because they can choose which card that they have to counter it better. Um, so you don't want to be the guy who wastes the elixir because, like I said, um, using elixir effectively is actually uh, the, the best way to win. Um, so I'm going to deploy my musketeer here. Probably didn't need to do that. Um, but the musketeer has more health than the um, archers, so it'll be able to take those out no problem. Now, he used three elixir to deploy those archers, and we used our four elixir musketeer to not only destroy them, but do some damage to the tower. And I'd say that's a pretty good trade. Now, he's going to arrow me and hit my crown tower, which is never something you want to do. And I talked about this before. You never want to um, hit the crown tower before you need to, because now you can see the cannon... Um, above the crown tower is going to help defend against the enemy when he comes in range. Um, so I'm actually going to just go all in here because I see no reason to defend against those goblins who can't take the tower by themselves. So we're going to actually just drop a fireball right on top of the king tower because it's pretty much good game. Um, but you saw the, the witch there is actually deploying skeletons, which is the cool thing about the witch. It's AoE, so it does damage in an area. Um, and it deploys those skeletons for defensive purposes. So, really good card on defense. Um, we're going to hit OK to the privacy policy, which is fine. And then it takes three hours to unlock the 
silver chest now we are at zero trophies which means we are in arena one goblin stadium now we've gone up from a training camp um here which is just for tutorial purposes these cards are all the ones that you can unlock during the training camp um arena but now we're on arena one which allows us to unlock the uh spear goblins goblin goblin hut valkyrie lightning and goblin barrel um so let's start the unlock for this because it's going to take three hours and let's go check our quest now this is a new feature in the game called quests uh every day you'll get a new quest and the higher level you are the more you could stack and kind of complete at the same time um some of the quests are easy like here's a free chest every four hours which is not really a quest it's just kind of free stuff um we got some gems which is nice because those are premium currency <clears throat> uh, we got a bomber we unlocked the spear goblins which is cool and we got another knight so that's good um, and every time you complete a quest, uh, you actually get quest tokens, which go towards your um, your reward, right? So if we get 50 quest tokens, we unlock this golden chest. And this is a good time for me to actually explain chests um, in the game and, and their kind of their role and, and what types of chests there are. So these wooden chests here, these um, are the lowest tier of chests. Uh, they take no time to open and you get almost nothing out of them. Uh, above a step up from that is the silver chest here and you can see um, at arena one you get three cards out of it um, above that is actually the golden chest which you can see up top here uh, which will give you between 50 and 70 gold and 10 cards and one of those cards at least is gonna be a rare which is cool um, so you can see it kind of gives you better odds the better the chest the better the odds of getting a high rarity card um, above that we also have the crown chest here and the way that you unlock the crown chest is every 24 hours um, you get the ability to unlock your crown chest and you get 10 crowns against real life players and it'll unlock and it's actually a little bit better than the even the uh, golden chest um, and the golden chest takes eight hours to unlock so the silver chest down here took three golden chests take eight crown chests take however long it takes you to unlock it which is almost always less than um than anything it's just get some crowns while playing um <clears throat> so we're gonna go in here now we actually unlocked the spear goblins and the average elixir cost is 3.8 for this deck and you can see we have three different decks here they're all the same because we have all the same cards um but the spear goblins only cost two elixir so i tend to keep my average elixir cost around 3.6 or lower i just for me that's where i'm comfortable playing um i don't think that if it's higher than that it just you can't really cycle through your cards and get to the one that you want and you're kind of stuck without elixir while your opponent's smashing your tower in um so you don't want your average elixir to be too high unless you know how to play that deck um and kind of know how to work with that some players like to keep their elixir cost below 3.0 um and have just a very like spammy you know low low cost card deck um but I tend to be around 3.5, I mean, 3.4 to 3.6 tends to be my average, my comfort zone. Um, and you guys can choose what you prefer. Um, so 3.8 is a little high for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take these Spear Goblins and I'm going to put them in instead of the... Um, I guess I'm going to do it instead of the musketeer and that's not to say that the musketeer is a bad card because it's a very good card um high level players use the musketeer even you know in max level decks um but i just feel like if you look here if we look at the arena we're in the musketeer is good for dealing um high damage to one unit and none of these cards really are heavily countered by the musketeer um the musketeer alone isn't good enough to take out like a giant or something like that so i just feel like maybe later i'll use the musketeer but right now i kind of want to keep that average alexa cost down so that's why i'm gonna take um take out her for the spear goblins now um I think that's good. I think we're, we're probably solid here. I like the witch. I'm going to leave the witch in there. And the giant is very strong at low levels. So I'm going to use him. And um, yeah, so the shop all the way to the left is actually where you can 
uh, unlock stuff for gold. So we get free gold, free 20 gold um, for today. And the higher level, the more stuff will be in the shop every day. So we can get five knights for 50 gold, or we can get one musketeer for 100 gold. Um, so rare cards obviously are harder to come by, so that's, that's the whole point there. Um, you can spend your gems on some chests here. So the giant chest is even better than the crown chest. Um, the magical chest is... Um, offers less cards actually so you only get 30 cards from a from a magical chest whereas you get 70 cards from a giant chest um but giant chests have 14 rares um magical chests have six rares but one epic you're guaranteed an epic so you can you can get legendary and epic cards out of the magical chest and super magical chest now of course super magical is the best one uh, but it costs 1600 gems um, and at that point, that's over $10, even as a starting player. So I wouldn't recommend um, buying these early on. They're just not that good because you can only get Arena 1 stuff, right? And some of the best cards are actually higher up. Um, so if you buy them at Arena 1, you have no chance of actually getting any legendaries or anything like that, um, which is just not worth it. So definitely don't buy them at level 1. It's stupid. Um, and here we can actually join a clan or a guild or whatever you want to call them. They're called clans in this game. Um, and by doing that, you can actually get an achievement. So I'm going to actually just join um, Grumpy Club, because uh, why not? Let's join them. Uh, and that'll actually unlock an achievement for me. Now, achievements are probably going to go away tomorrow. Um, it says we'll remove them in the next update. The next update is for December 12th, 2017. Um, so this actually might be gone for you guys by the time you watch this video. But if you do join a clan, you get 100 gems for free. So that's cool. Uh, and that also leveled me up, too, by, by um, getting that achievement. So I'm level 2. I get another quest slot, which is awesome. And by leveling up, your king tower and princess towers both... Uh, increase in health and damage uh, and one cool thing to note here is that the king tower um, has a lot more health than your regular princess towers but it deals actually less damage which is very interesting um, and you'll notice that even more later down the line um, so we got another quest so open 10 chests um, and if we do that we'll get a hundred gold and 20 tokens towards our golden chest which will put us halfway there 25 out of 50 um, and we're still working on the silver chest here. Um, in your clan, you can actually request cards and donate cards. So people here are actually requesting, hey, I really want some mini P.E.K.K.A.s or hey, I really want some minions. Um, and if you have excess of those cards, or you, let's say you never use the mini, mini P.E.K.K.A., you can just donate it to your clan mates and it'll give you both gold and experience to level up. Uh, and then you can also request cards yourself, which I can't do because you have to be level three, but uh, you can request cards um, and your do your clan mates can donate them to you specifically. So it's not all RNG. Getting the cards that you want isn't completely randomized up to the chests. You can get the cards that you want for your deck every day consistently from your clan mates. You just have to make sure that you are asking for them and logging into the game. Um, so I think the best thing for us to do now would actually be to go into a live 1v1 and actually verse uh, a real human player um and we'll talk about 2v2 a different day but 2v2 is actually one of my favorite ways to play the game and i play it every day and i think a lot of people feel that way so um let's go into a battle and this is going to be um my second ever live commentary of a clash royale um match so hopefully i'm not too bad and you can also taunt your opponent um what is he doing Okay, so he literally just um, fireballed the King Tower, which you never want to do. So I think uh, this guy actually might either not know what he's doing or he just wants to lose, um, which is cool by me. I can, I'll take the, the victory. That's cool. I'll take it. I don't mind at all. Um, I'm going to place my knight actually on the bridge here. Um, and we're going to push um, this lane. And now you can see um, he used his Luxor very inefficiently. So this kind of is just being given to us. Um, because, you know, it's just not, nothing he can do here. I'm going to drop my Spear Goblins and kind of just really, really force this tower. And once I do, I'm going to drop my, my Giant all the way up here. And you can see I can drop my Giant up there because I destroyed the tower. Um, and there's nothing he can do here. There's no way he can defend. So I'm glad that the first match I was able to show you guys was an easy victory. But um, that's never how it is. So that's how the game works. Um, I kind of feel guilty that my first match was just a hand me. Like he just gave it to me. Um, but you can see here that I got 30 trophies, which is cool. 
um, and we also got a silver chest and some gold for that win which is nice um, so now you can see that when this is done I can actually come and log back in and start to unlock my next chest uh, it'd be nice if we could unlock them uh, multiples at a time which you can't um, but it is what it is uh, and you can see I also earned three crowns towards my crown chest which is cool so I'm you know 30% of the way there um, so we'll do that a couple more times and then we'll unlock that um, and that's pretty much it so why don't we jump into one more because I feel bad that that first match was just super easy um, you know I feel like he he probably uh, either has has another account and just doesn't care or um, he is really bad so we're gonna drop our knight in the back and kind of let it gain elixir and I'm going to drop my spear goblins. Now I'm also going to just fireball all this. And I'm actually going to get those goblins. And I'm going to miss the mini, pe mini P.E.K.K.A. Which sucks. I was really hoping to get that mini P.E.K.K.A. with the fireball. Um, so I'm going to deploy my archers over here. So that way my tower doesn't get shot by that musketeer. And uh, we're going to be able to take out everything here. No problem. Um, I'm going to deploy my witch in the back here. So that way by the time she actually gets up to the bridge. She'll have spawned a bunch of uh, a bunch of skeletons in front of her. <clears throat> to kind of defend uh, against something else. He's showing the angry emoji. I don't know why. Um, so with that. I'm actually going to deploy a bomber back here. Um, I don't know why he's so mad right now. Um, so I'm going to deploy the bomber. And some spear goblins. Um, he's got a witch, so we're actually gonna fireball all this. Um, I really should have got that tower, but I'm able to. Um, I'm gonna arrow all this stuff too. Come on, kill the witch. Okay, so he did do some damage to my tower, which is a bummer. Um, so now we're just waiting here to see what happens, and I'm going to deploy my giant at the bridge here because he deployed his mini P.E.K.K.A. on the other side so that's gonna be that I'm gonna deploy my witch here and I'm gonna try and cycle back to like my arrows or something like that um, because it's just gonna be the best way to defend now his archers are really trying to destroy my giant but it's not working out um, and I'm really gonna get the maximum amount of value that I got there now I'm also gonna fireball his witch because fireball is a very good uh, counter to the witch it puts her at a very low health um, I don't really care too much about the archers on the right hand side. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I am worried about that giant though. So I'm going to place this stuff down here and I'm going to arrow all of that. Um, and I don't know if I'll be able to uh, actually do much here. So I'm just going to fireball as much as I can and try and save myself here. Um, he definitely did a lot of damage to that tower. Um, and he's going to fireball me. I'm going to deploy my witch as well and um, see if I can actually defend here which is my plan um, so I'm really trying hard not to lose <laughs> uh, for my first ever match so we're gonna deploy the uh... oh I have to fireball I have to fireball because otherwise okay so we both took a tower um, which is interesting this doesn't often happen um, so I'm going to deploy that and we're going to deploy the spear goblins here and um, I'm gonna deploy my archers to try and take that out and we're going to arrow all of this stuff here and we're gonna deploy my knight to to guard pretty much against all that and I'm gonna deploy my bomber to try and um, do some AoE damage here against that witch and then I'm going to drop my giant right next to the tower and kind of try and get him to do some extra damage here and I'm going to fireball in prediction of him dropping something. And I can actually just arrow right to the three crown victory. And I did it. I got the three crowns. So that is my first official win, we'll call it. Um, before that, it was kind of a gimme. So he was actually fighting back. Um, we actually got a golden chest too, which is cool. So I can show you it takes eight hours to unlock one of those guys. Um, so you'll see here we got three more crowns towards the crown chest. Um, and the eight hours for the golden chest. So golden chests I like to do overnight because you just sleep through it um, which is nice and easy um, but that's pretty much it guys so thank you so much for watching I know that I'm mainly a first-person shooter type of channel um, but I really really like Clash Royale and I think maybe you guys will like it too if you were just introduced to it so that's kind of what I'm trying to do is just show you guys like uh, the game and hopefully you guys can uh, download it it's free to play 
um, and if you have any questions drop them in the comment section below and I will work on this layout here I know this is very amateur it took me like 10 minutes to put this whole thing together um, so yeah I will make it look better for other videos if there are other videos if you guys hate this video then let me know in the comment section below say omniarch never play clash royale ever again um but if you enjoyed the video make sure you slap a like on it subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications so you know the next time i upload and that's about it guys so thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch and i will talk to you guys again soon peace